Hey guys, it's May from Markets with May, and we are going through the last 15 minutes uh, of the Deal Book Summit interview with uh, Sam Bankman Freed, SBF. Uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin is interviewing him on behalf of the New York Times. And this is the last of the episodes that I'm doing 15 minute slugs of this one hour and 15 minute interview commenting on different things. I do have a pretty strong background in risk management as I was the head of risk analytics for a bunch of buy side firms in New York City, hedge funds. Um, and this is mostly sell side risk and analytics. So um, there is that, but I do think a lot of the jargon and confusion, I'm happy to kind of talk through as you're watching this to make it a little bit more uh, digestible. So let's get into this last 15 minutes. Um, we last left off on questions related to whether or not he was doing any kind of prescription drugs um, while he was an officer. You know, that to me is not the problem here at all. So I fast forwarded past that. It's like one minute of stuff. So here we go. One question when we're talking about venture capitalists, um, yep. Sequoia and, and Paradigm invested in you. Uh, but there have now been questions about the fact that you invested in them and whether these were what some people describe in the business round trip deals. Can you speak to that? I uh, I mean, I think well after they had invested um, in FTX, I, I, I don't know the details, but I think um, there may have been a small investment um, into some of their funds. I think you know, it was something that we did because I don't know, we believed in what they were doing. It seemed like a, a a good opportunity and um didn't think too much about it i'm curious to in other words with the round trip um stuff he is really referring to they invested in him and then he reinvested in different sequoia funds or things of that nature but there are also other ways that you guys can do something very mutual depending on all of the different parts that you might have so it might be certain trading certain counterparty there's a couple of different ways that this can be done so that's not really a complete answer in my opinion but we'll just go with it and i know you're an optimist as well uh, we've talked about that but what do you think realistically is your future? So what is my future? Um, I don't know what my far future is. And, you know, when you fast forward, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing, you know, a long time from now. I think when I look at, you know, at the near and medium term, what am I thinking? What I'm thinking is, and again, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and it, a lot of it's not in my hands at this point. Um, but I uh, I want to be helpful wherever I can to regulators, administrators, you know, internationally who are working to uh, you know to help FTX's customers, and I want to be helpful wherever I can on anything that could help bring a lot more value to those customers. And you know, I don't know where that will lead. I can say that prior to filing. Um, there had been a lot of interest in um in financing uh a lot of fairly strong interest you know billions of many billions of dollars worth um i don't uh uh i can't make any promises about anything but um uh i i would have thought that there would be you know a chance for a pathway forward here that would bring more value to customers than what would happen if you just sort of sold everything else for uh you know for scraps and um i don't have confidence i don't i i, I can't promise you and you know i can't promise anyone anything there and it's not really in my hands uh to a large extent but um but i would think that it would make sense to be exploring that because i uh, i think there's a chance that customers could end up, up made a lot more whole i don't know maybe even fully whole um if there was a really strong concerted effort. How um, would that happen? So, you know, there have been you know there have been examples of this before in crypto history where that happened. Um, obviously, you can look at what happened with Bitfinex um, back a number of years ago, um, where it got hacked and then ended up making over a few year period customers whole. Um, there are a lot of assets that are on hand here, although many of them are not liquid. Um, uh, they were worth quite a bit more than the. You know, needed liabilities 
a month ago even, uh, let alone a year ago. Uh, you know, there is at least a month ago, there were, you know, or or I guess, you know, three weeks ago, billions of dollars of uh, potential funding opportunities. Um, you know, I, I don't know that it would have been great for my uh, stake as a shareholder uh, of FTX, but that's not what matters here. And I think it would have brought more financing to customers. You saw, obviously, you know, the Tron facility, which is open for a little while on FTX, which allowed some customers to get liquidity. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you put some of these together. Um, uh, you know, there's obviously, you know, equity in the business. Um, where does that lead? I don't know exactly. And, and again, it's not going to be my, you know, decision to make uh, at the end of the day. But um, I, but I, I think there's a shot for a real value. Sam, um, that probably didn't make a whole lot of sense. It sounds very mumble jumble, but essentially what he's saying is that just like any other broker dealer, if people stop taking their assets out, and at this point, in a lot of cases, it's frozen, you can't take it out and the capital comes back in, or they infuse this particular organization with a bunch of capital such that there's it eliminates the risk that there's a, a inability to ever get your money out. Then if you get a stabilization in the market and a lift to all crypto assets associated with uh, something closer to what it traded at even six months ago, then people could be not only made whole on their holdings, but they might get that six month lift. So that's a lot of ifs. I talked about this briefly in, I think, the you know, earlier segments, I want to call it two segments back, um, where it really is, um, it, you know, it, it's really the collateral being driven downwards that is causing the entirety of the firm to have almost no equity value, right? So he's, he said it actually just a little bit, even in this clip here, where he believes that if you sold off just the US pieces, that there is some intrinsic inherent value to that. Now, um, this is really um, both true and difficult to think through because there is absolutely cases where you have an exchange, someone infuses money in that exchange and then everybody's cool. This has already gone into bankruptcy. So the infusion point is a little bit different. Additionally, with crypto, it, it's just, it, it adds a layer that's harder to tell how to think about it because even though in some ways this was an attack on the specific assets of Alameda, the fact is it's really hard to tell with the crypto, right? Like Terra Luna went to zero very fast. So let's keep going. We're almost through this. And a couple of just quick other questions. Uh, one is given what you know about compliance or the lack of it, in this business, in this industry. I think there are a lot of people who are holding crypto today, perhaps on exchanges like Binance and other places. Yep. yep. What should they think, given what you do know and to the extent that you right. can tell us the truth about what you know? What should they think? And and I, I, I presume you're asking what should they think about the safety of their assets going forward? And Correct. Yeah. So, look, I don't... Um, I obviously don't know exactly what's going on at other exchanges. Um, I can tell you what I would think as a customer, you know, uh, if I if I were a customer here, which is um, look for the things that I wish FTX had been able to supply. Um, things like, you know, proof of reserves is helpful. Um, look for as rigorous of that as you can. Look for regulatory reporting, right? You look at what the JFSA had in place in Japan. Um, you look at what FTX US derivatives had with you know, uh, sort of frequent reporting to regulators of exactly what you know customer assets, balances, liabilities, distributions are, um, and uh, what about the I governance that, piece. Yeah, what about the governance piece because one of the things we have not talked about is you had no board, and you had no CFO, and that should have been a red flag, frankly, for all of us. So interestingly, in some ways, we had too many boards. We had. I believe just just literally a moment as, as they connect the feed. Sam, thank you for coming back. Um, we were in the middle of the conversation about no, C, no, no board, no CFO. And you said something which I think raised a lot of eyebrows here. You said you thought you had too many boards. Yeah. Um, and you can hear me here? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, cool. So we didn't talk about much, but there is a board of FTX Japan. There's a board of FTX US derivatives, FTX Australia, FTX Singapore. 
um, FTX Europe. Um, you know, we had, I think, more than a dozen boards when you look at all of the entities put together. Um, and, you know, many of these boards had regulatory functions. I think um, the problem to some extent was, okay, sure, you have all these boards, but at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, who is the person who's in charge of global or, or the board or, 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 or the function that's in charge of, you know, global site customer risk management? Like, you know, there's a diffusion of responsibility to some extent on that front. And, you know, there needed to be, I think, a single or a small set of entities, whether of boards, people, of responsible parties that were sitting there saying, I feel responsible. All right. I just can't almost. The eye roll started all the way back and there's not a global board. Let, okay. So let's actually break this down. You have all these different boards, right? In the board package, there should absolutely be a risk portion of that. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> and so um, in each of, even if you just had global at each of the boards and each of the countries that he names so lovingly, if you had a risk manager that just really actually did the most basic of their job, which apparently wasn't done, which we go through on episode one of this, should have been okay. Now, do you need a head of global risk? Heck yeah, you do. Because you got tripped up on a trade with Alameda, which is based in the Bahamas and should have just been in one single one single location. Now, if you're telling me that you had a lot of Alamedas and it just so happens that these types of organizations, I don't know, and Alameda actually has global offices as well. Let me take a half a step back. When you described your business, you described certain countries that required local jurisdiction, if you will, and then the international business as one piece. So, okay. If I take you at that, then Alameda should be in the international piece. And therefore, you know, its assets should be in one spot. So whatever board it reports to should be doing the appropriate risk management associated with that. But if what you're actually saying is that Alameda has split offices across the world, and then you are sitting there splitting offices across the world, and you don't have a global head of risk that's looking at all of that together... That's insane. I don't know another way to say it. And the fact that anyone on your board wasn't asking that question also tells me how good your board was, which means that you failed to answer this question in a meaningful way. Oh my God, this is so bad. All right, anyways, let's keep going. We're almost through it. Sorry, guys. I just couldn't because this is just, oh. What happens on FTX? And I, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had actually, you know, audited financials. Um, I, you know, from the FTX finances perspective, we had infrastructure, but from the customer risk and finances perspective, much less. Sam, uh, how much money do you have left at this point? Uh, I mean, I, to my knowledge, like close to nothing. I mean, I basically mean? everything was just in the companies. I mean, it's you didn't put away uh, some unless, money somewhere. No, no, I I don't have any you know hidden funds here. Um, everything I have, I'm I'm you know disclosing, and um, you know I'm I'm down to uh, uh, I think I have one working credit card left. I think it, I think it might be a, a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Um, in in that bank account. Um, I uh, and I uh, I mean I, you know. Everything that I had, uh, even all the loans I had, were, were those. You know, those were all things I was reinvesting in in the businesses that I I put everything wow, I had. So in, in leveraged. So I want to ask you two final leveraged. questions. Were you truthful with us today? I I was as truthful as as I as you know I'm knowledgeable to be. There's 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 some things I wish I knew more about. But yes, I was. So let me ask you this. Do you agree that over time you also lied? I believe, do I agree that I lied? Why is this a hard question? I don't know of times when I lied. I think, look, there are certainly times when I was acting as a, um, as a representative, as a marketer for FTX. And when I was That's looking yes, for uh, <laughs> how can I, you know, in a way which is, truthful 
Uh, but, you know, paint FTX as, you know, compelling a way as possible, as exciting and optimistic a way uh, as possible. And, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't talking about what are the risks involved with FTX, you know, there. Um, I obviously wish that I spent more time dwelling on the downsides and less time thinking about the upsides. Sam Bankman fried I want to thank you uh, for this interview. I hope that uh, some. All right. And that is it. Well, hopefully this walkthrough was a little bit helpful. I mean, there are so many details that still need to come out of this. And we won't know if he's telling the truth or lying until all of discovery is done. Anyways, if this was helpful, if I missed something, if you have some answers on or some greater knowledge, stick it down below. I'd love to hear from you. If this was helpful, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. That's always great for me to know. And until next time, be careful in these markets out there.